What's up guys, Justin here with TheRenderingEssentials.com back with another SketchUp and InScape tutorial for you. So in this video we're going to talk about how to add and edit materials inside of InScape. So let's go ahead and just jump into it. Alright, so before we get started, uh, this is a 3D warehouse model that you can download um, and follow along if you want to. So this is the Hungarian House by SZ Kristoff. Alright, so what I want to do in this video is I want to talk through InScape's different material options and how to edit the different materials contained inside of your InScape renderings. And so to start off, um, InScape has a window in here where you can actually edit the attributes of different materials. And so what I'm going to do is just run through some of those settings, kind of what they do, and uh, just give you kind of an idea of the way that works. We may get more in-depth in those in the future. So to start off, to bring that up, you're just going to click on this button right here. And that's going to bring up your InScape materials window. And what the InScape materials window is going to do is that's going to allow you to adjust just the attributes of different materials. And so there's four different materials or four different types contained in InScape. So, and I guess to start off, the material that you're editing is going to be whatever material you have selected with SketchUp's material editor. So like for example, if I was to sample this wall and get this material for, that's going to be kind of a foliage material. If I was to select the stone, you can see how the stone material shows up. So what's happening here is whatever's selected in SketchUp is going to pop up in the InScape materials window. And so there's a drop down here and there's four different kinds of material. So there's generic. There's grass, there's water, and there's foliage. And so each one of those is going to affect the way that the um, it's going to affect the way that the materials act inside of InScape. So for example, um, a grass material in this case, if we were to really fly in on this, um, this material right here is set to a grass. And so I can use the eyedropper to select that. And you can see how because the word grass shows up in here, grass has automatically been applied inside of your materials window. And so I can click and adjust things about this using the sliders down below. You can see how as soon as I set something to grass, let's say just for example that I was to set this concrete block to grass, you can see how inside of my rendering, InScape is going to treat that like a grass material. So you can use this drop down to affect different things and affect the way that they're treated inside of InScape. Another example is let's say that I set it so that this block material is a water. Well, this would then render a water material in this location. So you can see how just by using this drop down, you can select different things in here. And I'm, I'm not going to get too deep into the water settings right now, but note that the water and the grass are all fully editable. So you can adjust the intensity of the water. You can adjust uh, kind of what direction the water map is going, uh, different wave settings, stuff like that. You know, these are all fully editable and it's really easy to set these inside of InScape. So I'm going to set this back to kind of a block material. And so I really want to focus on some of these settings for the more generic or for the generic materials in here because um, these can be really powerful to help you make your renderings more realistic. What I want to do in this case is let's take a look at the inside of our building and I'm just going to kind of fly through and get a view over here from inside of our building inside of InScape just to give you kind of an idea of what these different settings are doing. And so in this case what I've done is I've gone through and I've selected the tile material contained inside of uh, SketchUp. So I just use the eyedropper to select this tile. And so now let's take a little bit of a look at all the different settings. So the first thing is this first option is showing you what the texture image is. And so if I click on this texture image you can see how this is going to show you a preview of the image that it's using to create the tile material as well as some different settings in here. So you can adjust the brightness of the texture texture image that's in here. Um, you can kind of invert the dark and the light in here. Um, I wouldn't necessarily recommend using that one, but you can definitely do that. And you can also transform the size of the material. So let's say that you wanted this to be a little bit bigger. You could just type in like a one and a one, and you'll notice these tiles show up a lot bigger inside of InScape without you having to actually adjust the material size um, inside of SketchUp. So you can definitely come in here and adjust all of those images. Um, but generally you're not going to mess around with that one too much. You can also adjust the color or the tint of the material. So you can see how if I come in here and I select something like, we'll pick like a red or maybe 
we'll pick like a blue tile. So you can see how if we select a tint color of blue, that's gonna allow us to adjust the color of a material inside of Inkscape. And if you want to, you can pick a close color and then use the slider in order to adjust this. You can see how I'm able to adjust um, I'm able to adjust this color to really whatever I want it to be. So this gives you a lot of different options for adjusting your material inside of your Inkscape rendering. And the other thing you can do, and we'll talk about this more in a minute, is you can also fade out the image. So let's say you don't want to see the texture image on this face for some reason. Like uh, in this case, probably if we wanted to like preview our bump map or something like that, you can click and drag this to the left and the right in order to uh, set how strongly your texture image is being tiled in here. Usually I leave this one at 100%. And so self-illumination allows you to set objects to be emitters. So let's say for example, and I will adjust, there we go. So let's say for example that I wanted this rooster to be more of a light inside of Inkscape. Well what I could do is I could select this using the eyedropper, and if I click the button for self-illumination, you're gonna notice that this actually allows you to set this as a light emitter. And so if I was to go in here and make this like a nighttime shot or something like that, you can see how you could actually set this to emit light. And one cool thing about this is you can see how this is actually reflecting off of your reflective objects um, inside of Inkscape. So you can use this to create different lights and other things like that. You can also adjust how strong that light is. So you can see how the more the stronger I make this, the more it's illuminating the things around it. And you can also adjust the color of that emitter if you want this to be an emitter. So self-illumination is going to set something so that it it's, um, emits light, and then transparency is going to do exactly what it sounds like. It's going to make a material transparent, so it's going to allow light to move through it. And probably a good example of this is we'll take a look at our glass on our exterior of our building. And so I'm going to select this scene right here, and one thing you'll notice is if I select this material because because it has transparency set inside of SketchUp, um, this automatically set this to be a transparent material inside of Inkscape. And so you can see how this checkbox, or this box is checked right now allowing light to come through this. But if I was to uncheck this, you can see how inside of my rendering, light is no longer coming through. It's still reflective, um, to a certain degree, but it's not transparent anymore. So you can set your different materials to be transparent, and you can also adjust the opacity, of, so like how much light is allowed through here, as well as the tint color of your glass. So if you wanted this glass to be have like a red tint or something like that, you can see how that's an easy adjustment to make. Um, so generally white is going to be standard. It's not going to affect your light all that much. Um, you can also adjust your refractive index, which is going to affect the way that light is bending through your glass. I wouldn't, generally I don't do too much with this setting. And then you can also set a glass material as a uh, frosted. So you can see how when I set this as a frosted and then I kind of zoom in and inscape, you can see how this is kind of, um, it's making the light bounce around in the material so that it looks like a frosted glass. You can adjust all of those different settings for your transparent materials um, in order to really kind of dial in the way that those look. So the next thing I want to talk about is the bump maps. And so bump maps are something that can really make your textures super realistic. And so in this case, for example, um, if I look at this tile material. It's just kind of a flat image. It's just being um, repeated over and over and over again. But the thing is, things in real life have a bump to them. So something that makes them look a little bit more um, or less uniform. And so in this case, I'm going to select my tile material and you can see how down here, once I select my tile material, it gives me an option to either add a bump map so sometimes you download materials and they have that map included with them, or it has the option for use albedo. And so if I click on the button for use albedo, what that's gonna do is that's gonna generate a bump map. It's gonna make this material bumpy based on the material image. And it gives you a pretty good effect in here. And what I'm gonna do in this case is I'm actually gonna drag my image fade to the left so that we can see it. So this image is no longer being tiled in here. So you can see the effect of the bump map. And you can basically see that this is a uh, this is making this look bumpy, both where there's imperfections in the tile as well as at the grout lines. So what that does is that just makes this look more realistic. And you can adjust the strength of that by dragging your slider to the left 
or to the right. So if you drag it all the way to the left, um, then it's going to do kind of a reverse bump. So you can kind of affect the way or the direction that this is simulated. In this case, I'm going to leave this at about three. And you can do more edits to this bump map by clicking on this image. Uh, you can see how that allows you to come in here and make different changes. Like you can invert the bump map if you want to, to make things go out or in, um, as well as adjusting the brightness and the strength of that. Um, I'm not going to get into that too much. But what I'm going to do in this case is I'm going to turn my image back on. And once I turn my image back on, we're going to take a look at this last set of options. You can see how you can actually adjust how shiny or not shiny this material is by using this roughness slider. So you can see how if I drag this roughness slider to the left, I'm getting a lot more light bouncing off of this face, which isn't necessarily super realistic. You kind of have to be careful with this. So you can see how if I adjust my bump map, uh, my bump map and my roughness map kind of work together to adjust the way that this material looks. Um, you can see how the rougher I make this, the less light is bouncing off of this face. So the other thing you can do though is instead of doing that, you can either apply a, a reflection map or you can use the albedo for this as well. And so if I click on the button for use albedo, you're going to notice that I'm actually not getting very much effect in here. Right now it didn't really affect the way that my tile looks. but if I click on this image and I go in here and I click the button for inverted, you can see how if I invert this roughness map, I'm now getting more light bouncing off of this tile material. And so you can go in here and you can adjust both how much bump is in here, which you can see is actually affecting um, how rough this tile looks. And then you can also affect the brightness. And you can see how when I drag the brightness down, on my roughness map when I go inside of here, that's gonna make this reflect more or less. So you can kind of use this to dial this in to make your materials look the way you want them to look. And then the last two options, so you can make things look metallic. And generally this is 100% on or 100% off, like things are usually metallic or they're not, like either they're metal or they're not. In this case, this is all the way off. And then you can adjust the specularity down here. I don't usually do a whole lot with this. I usually leave it at about 50%. But you can see how all of these materials and their attributes are really easy to edit inside of Enscape. So that's where I'm going to end this video. I'm going to leave a link below to the full getting started with Enscape playlist so you can really dive deep into the features of this rendering program. If you like this video, please remember to click that like button down below. If you're new around here, remember to click that subscribe button for new rendering content every week. But as always, thank you so much for taking the time to watch this. I really appreciate it and I will catch you in the next video. Thanks guys.